Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome finally to the uh, repairs I've got to do to the H2. Now cast your minds back to the end of last season and I did a video about me dropping my pride and joy, dropping my £25,000 motorcycle. Uh, or, you know, at a junction, bang. I did a bit of damage um, when I dropped it. There's some cosmetic damage with the uh, the H2R wing and, and the main fairing panel's damage. But in this video, I'm going to strip the bike down. I don't know what's damaged underneath the fairings. I think perhaps the uh, reservoir bottle for the radiator's cracked. So I don't quite know. But in this video, we're going to strip it down, see what damage I did when I dropped it, tally up the cost of repairs, because this is an expensive bike to drop and then basically put it back together get things repaired and then get it all back and ready for the season but in this video we're finally going to get around to fixing this bike and getting it back to pristine condition once more so if that sounds of interest grab yourself a quick cuppa and uh, chopsy roll the intro So first of all, what we're going to do, take this panel off, see what's going on behind it, see what I've busted, tally up what parts I need, and then get on the phone to Wheels Motorcycles to see how they can help me. Let's get the tools out. Ooh. Seven or eight millimetre. Oh, it's lovely having a beautiful set of tools. to crack into this. There's two more right under the top here. We've also got another one here, look, but it's snapped already. This is this, it's in a panel's broken, but that's snapped here. That is now basically the panel away. Oh yeah. Looks like the water bottle snapped. Actually the the fit, that's where all the fluid is coming out. So of course I've got the damage on the uh, on the wing. I'm going to see if I can get that sort of rubbed down maybe and re-lacquered and polished. Don't know. On the inside of the panel, the uh, bottles snap there. Look, it's snapped off at the actual uh, nipple, which goes Another into the nipple. bottle. Maybe this. And this inner panel is cracked. Look, this is cracked all the way up here. Place your guesses. How much is this inner panel going to cost? It's only plastic. How much is the bottle and the uh, <laughs> and the panel and the inner panel going to cost? Place your bets now. Okay, so that's the inner panel. Look, yeah, big crack there. I could probably, I mean, that could, that could be repaired. That could probably be plastic welded, but it's not the sort of bike you want to do sort of half half assed repairs on, is it? Can you see that cracked here? And it is right through to the other side as well. Apart from obviously the damage to the outside. The rest of it's okay. The rest of it's okay. Obviously being carbon fiber, it's fantastically strong, you know? So there's, there's no cracks. This is all fine. It's, it's just cosmetic. So I'll see if I can take it to a body shop, see if they can sand that down, re-lacquer it, see how it looks. If it doesn't look any good, I have to get a new one. So we need a new panel and we need a new bottle and inner panel. I know, I know these are a thousand pounds. These are a thousand pounds. I don't know how much these are. I'm lucky though, last year, I actually managed to find one of these on eBay, brand new for 500 quid. So I've, I've got a replacement one of these, which I bought last year for 500. So I've saved myself 500 quid already. Does Mrs. Shops know how much they cost? Don't you dare tell her. We also have some damage to the crankcase here. I mean, again, very minor, but I'm going to replace it for a new one. I could probably give it, my mate Adam could probably sand that down, repaint that with Cerakote and it would look fine, but uh, it wouldn't be original. So how much do you reckon a crank casing is going to be? Also, we've got some scuffage on the Van Dimon end can. Again, that's probably polish outable. There's a deep, deep polish. I think might be able to get that out. This is the new panel, which I bought uh, end of last year. When I saw it was on eBay, I thought, I cannot resist this. And uh, yeah, so 
I have a brand new panel. As I say, this should be a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds for a bit of plastic. The reason this is so expensive, well, the, the, the reason, the justification for this being so expensive is the finish on the H2 is this uh, chrome finish or silver finish. Now this isn't paint, this is actually uh, a, a silver plating process. So these are all plated at the factory. You know, it's very specialist. This is why, this is even though this is a plastic panel, this is why it's so expensive, because of this darn silver coating. But that's one piece we've got already. I've also got this, which is a brand new Van Diemen end can. Now I've got to say a massive thanks to Van Diemen. I posted up on Instagram that I dropped the bike and a lot of people said, oh, you know, really sorry. And Van Diemen said, we'll send you a new end can free of charge. So they sent this to me from Australia. It's even got a new baffle in it, brand new. So I haven't got to worry trying to buff out that standard pipe. I probably will have a go to see if it will polish out, but um, I've got a brand new end can to put on. So it's a massive thanks to Van Diemen for, for sending that to me. It's, it's really, really appreciated. Cheers, Michael. So now I know what I need to fix the bike. I'm going to uh, speak to Will's Motorcycles, get some parts ordered, and I'll see you back here in a jiffy with the trick of YouTube when the parts turn up. See you in a minute. So two months has now passed. Six week delay on the Warfare bottle. <laughs> so it's two months later since the start of this video. And finally, I have a box full of Kawasaki parts and wheels motorcycles so we can finally get this bike finished. It's now June. Bike's not been started since last year, November time. So I'm absolutely desperate to get this finished and I can ride the bloody thing. So uh, let's crack the box, look at the new bits. I don't even know if all the right bits are in here because I've not gone through everything. Um, that's the new inner panel, I'm guessing. Guess how much? 68 pounds, 68 pounds. I didn't think it was too bad actually, 68 pounds for that. Pretty good, I'm happy with that. Water bottle, I think that was 38 pounds. I'll pop it on the screen if I've got these prices wrong. And this must be the, uh, the new crankcase. The new crankcase cover was 280 pounds. But again, I've got to thank Wheels Motorcycles because they did me a bit of a deal here because they felt sorry for me breaking my bike. They'd done me a bit of a deal. And probably extra. without their help, you know, I probably would have ended up having that repainted rather than replaced. But, uh, you know, this is my baby, this bike. It's no expense spared, really. But there we go, new crankcase. I have also, in the two months since I started this, I've had the damaged wing repainted now or recoated. My mate Barry um, did this for me. He did the painting on the Hypermotard subframe. He's an absolutely fantastic painter and he's managed to do a brilliant repair on that carbon fiber piece. It looks absolutely brand new. So the damage which was on this was just really clear coat damage. It was through to the actual fiber in a few places but he's managed to sand it down, re-lacquer the whole thing and it's basically looking like new so uh, massive thanks to barry i put links to barry's facebook page to his business because he's a fantastic painter so i may even get him to repaint the whole hyper motard a different color so he's gonna be doing the painting on the hyper as well but that's a, that's an incredible job i cannot even see where any damage was it literally looks brand new massive thanks barry he's a legend he certainly is mavis he certainly is so as i've got to change the crankcase and I haven't done it. I'm going to actually change the oil on the bike first because obviously when they take the crankcase off, um, you're going to get oil falling out. Obviously, if I put the bike on the side stand, I could actually probably get the crankcase off without having to drain the oil. But it's probably only done 800 miles last year since I actually changed the oil before. But this is my baby. Even though it's only done 800 miles, I'm going to change the oil, put fresh oil in it for the season because why wouldn't you? This bike's too special not to. moaning that I was cack-handed when I did this last time. The reason is I've got a camera here. I can't, 
If I want to do it like you can't see it, I can get behind it. And I'm doing it with my left hand as well because of the exhaust on this side. So since I'm going, oh, you're a bit candid with the tools. That's why, because I'm doing it from the opposite side and I'm right handed. I could stand there and actually, actually, shut you people up. I'm going to move you. You don't better see as well. But you don't better call me a cack handed idiot. Can I still call you a cack handed idiot? Those headers, Mavis, absolutely beautiful. Whilst we drain, I'm gonna take this casing off. Top tip for you, because all of these crankcase bolts will be different sizes, or some of them be different sizes, so you don't have to try and remember which one goes where, draw a little template of your casing. I've had a new one, I just drew around it, but you don't have to do that and then push the bolt into where it goes in the case. So as you uh, take the bolts out, push them into the cardboard where they go and then they're sitting there until you need to put them back in again. Top tip. Top tip for the forgetful. I'm not just a pretty face, Mavis, am I? Maybe 30 years ago. Cheeky. Last bolt out. Remove the casing. As you can see, you've got these like, soundproofing elements in there. And I've also got the sight glass as well. The new one doesn't come with the sight glass. I see it's got a sir clip on it. I may not be able to get that out. I may have to order a new sight glass. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get that out or not. Uh, gasket. I do actually have a new gasket. I have a new one. There you go, look, that's what's in there. So I've got my old one, I've got my new one. As you can see, there's certain elements to move over, but I'm going to start with the, with the uh, sight glass because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that out or not. I really hope so. What means I've got to order something else <laughs> to get the bike finished, which could take another two months to arrive. I think it's time for some refreshments. Uh, Mavis, did we hear anything back from the uh, Coca-Cola sponsorship? Nothing nada. No? Refreshment, Mavis. How about some delicious Chopsy Cola? Oh yeah, now you're talking. Oh, what do we want? Let's it out. Part of my jobs always end up with me whacking things. Here we go. Here's the decay special tools. Oh. Hey, it's come out. There it is. Whether or not it's a reusable item, it actually looks pretty good. What do you reckon, Mavis? Do we risk it? What's the worst that can happen? It leaks oil all over your rear tyre and you crash and die. Yeah, you put it that way. I've just got to get this access cover off now. I should have loosened that while it was on the bike. Absolute idiot. There we go. Okay, so I've refitted everything. I have reused the sight glass. It all went in fine. It pushed in quite easily. It, all, it wasn't crushed or didn't look any, like there was any wear on the rubber. So I've got the uh, circlet back in, got the uh, sound editing back in. I've loctited these bolts before anyone says, and they were loctited from the factory. So um, we'll put the timing cover back on once it's all bolted back on the bike. So I can obviously tighten it up properly. I've cleaned off the, uh, gasket material, any sort of big bits of gasket material which are left. A clean white, I've Googled. I've actually Googled and uh, you just need to add sealant to the, the crankcase joining bits here. So a bit there and a bit there. Just put a little dab here. You don't need much. A little dab here. I'm gonna put the bolts through and then put the uh, gasket onto the bolts that and then do it oh yeah that's the way to do it 
I've got my bolts laid out in the picture, so I know exactly which ones go where. There is a certain sequence to how they have to be tightened. So I'm just getting them to bite and then I'll tighten them in the correct sequence. Apply non-permanent locking agent, blue Loctite, to the clutch cover bolts B. So the only ones which have Loctite on them are that one. The tightening sequence is basically that one, that one, that one. Oh right, then it goes around like that. So two opposite each other and then follow around. There we go. New crankcase fitted and cleaned up. Side glass. Look at that. Damage is gone. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do now, that's that done. I'm going to get the oil put back in it and then I'm done with all the dirty stuff. <laughs> it's just the clean stuff to do then. So uh, I'm going to bang the oil in it, new filter on, genuine Kawasaki filter going on somewhere around here, somewhere around here. And then, uh, yeah, job done. We can move on to the fairings, but uh, that's great. That's on there. That's fitted. Oh, that's a relief. Thank Fook, it's silkaline. Give it a rim job. Like this. What's a knob? Sorry. I only ever do my filters up hand tight. I mean, I've got hands like shovels, so I can get them quite tight. Ain't going nowhere. Okay, that's oil level topped up. I'm just gonna fire it up again, just to check the level again after I run it, basically. it may need a little top up so that thank god is the oily bits done and and the scariest bit about doing this um new crankcase is on so now i think let's change the exhaust let's put the new van demon end tip on and then we can get the water bottle and side panel back on We're almost done so the damage on the van demon isn't too bad and again massive thanks for michael to for sending me a new one i'll probably see if i can get that polished out and it's a spare. <laughs> but we do have a lovely new one. Oh! Van Demon actually make a, a silencer for the H2, which is switchable between loud and quiet. It's got like a valve in it, which you can switch on the handlebars, and it sort of directs the gases through a separate, more baffled chamber, or you can have it switched to the loud side and it'll just come straight out. So I may try and get hold of one of those if you guys are interested in seeing that. They're also doing them for things like the Rocket 3. There's a few other bikes now, Multistrada, V4, where they're doing these switchable silences so loud and quiet. And then of course that's great because in the UK at the moment, there's, we've got noise cameras going up and things like that. So it will come to a point where I'm not gonna be able to ride this bike with this exhaust on without getting pulled over and getting fines and everything. So long term, it's great to know that Van Diemen do this option where you can have it quite or loud. Put a little bit of copper, copper grease on there. Finally getting there. So the last job is to put the inner panel back on, mount the water bottle in it. Here's the water bottle. Mount the new water bottle within the panel Mount the inner panel to the outer panel, my new outer panel I bought six months ago, and then mount that back on the bike. Then we're done. This is the bugger. This is what took so long. This took eight weeks to arrive, this little, uh, this replacement water bottle. It's completely different to what's on the SX version. This is unique to the Ninja H2. I even looked to see if there's any secondhand ones anywhere, but there's not, it, you know, it's new only. It was all because that nipple had broken off. Nipple ha ha. Nipples. Ooh, my eyes. I can't see anything in these drawers, it's too bright. Tube off. Oh, I have the lid, thank you very much. I've just got the main panel out of the bag and I don't know if you can see it, but it's got some, where it's been in a plastic bag, it's got some sort of reaction and you can sort of see like watermarks or the bit. Oh. I don't know if that's going to come out or not. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to put it up back together and then um, sort of polish it on the bike. So I'm not touching it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> that's not going to be permanently marked.
panel back together. I think I might be all right with that markings where well, I've wiped it down. I think it's going to be okay. <laughs> Horrible moment there. I thought I was back with a damaged panel again. So I've managed to go back together, inner panels on. All we've got to do now is we've got the little overflow from the radiator to connect to the nipple at the bottom, which is what nipple broke originally. Hard. And then basically mount the panel back on the bike. I forgot, I've got to put coolant in the bottle before I put it back on the bike, because there's no access once it's back on the bike. There we go, the panel is refitted. I didn't press record, so sorry. <laughs> you haven't got the fitting enough. of it. I've wiped it all down uh, with the, with the clean microfiber and uh, baby wipe actually and it's actually got rid of all of those marks on the bike which are on that panel which i thought might have been permanent so that's really good she is complete thanks so much for watching guys i'm so pleased it's all back together now i've just got to put it through the mot and then what i'll do i'm going to go for a ride i'll bring you along with me because basically now what i want to check is there's a lot of other bikes which have caught my eye a little bit at the moment. We've got the Pikes Peak Multistrada, which I really like the look of. Obviously, the new Diavel V4, which I love. The M1000R, I'm quite liking that as well. So I'm going to take this for a spin and decide what to do with this bike. Should I sell this, even though these are going up in money, and perhaps buy a bike which is a bit more usable, which I'm going to have a bit more fun on and use a bit more? but perhaps won't appreciate like this. So uh, yeah, we're going to have a bit of a conversation about what to do with this machine once it's been MOT'd. So uh, if that sounds of interest, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.